This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello, 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 and welcome to Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network powered by Raven International. I'm your host, Debbie Specter Weissman, the Dream Coach. This is a show where we talk about dreams, both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love and rediscover the truth of who you really are. Our aim on this show has always been to provide strategies for how you can live your dream life. But as the past year has shown, that's a hard road to travel when you're faced with economic and social hardship. And nobody's been hit harder than women. According to Labor Department data, more than 11 million women have lost their jobs. And another 2.65 million have left the workforce entirely. And a lot of those jobs aren't coming back. But the same forces that upended many women's sense of security can also be the catalyst to new opportunities. We're going to explore the way we can use the lessons from the pandemic to thrive in the new economy with global entrepreneur and best-selling author, Rubel Chandy. After having built three successful businesses, Rubel is now committed to helping other businesses succeed through his online accelerator workshops. And he's the author of the best-selling book, 90 Days to Life, A Journey from Turmoil to Triumph. Welcome to the Dream Power Show, Rubel. Thank you, Debbie. It's great to be with you. Oh, thank you. Well, everybody's been predicting a post-pandemic boom because of all the pent-up behavior and spending that's been held in check for the past year. Do you agree? There will be a temporary, temporary uh, activation of economy because of the because of that. At the same time, we are stepping into a new and unknown world. Uh, the, because of the pandemic, the last 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 season, which was 2007, 2008, with the recession, uh, banks were out of money. They didn't have money. So we ended up paying banks money so that bank banks can sustain. But in this game, <clears throat> this might sound... A little bit, a uh, little bit not positive for a second, but there is a bright side at the end of the tunnel. I'll share that with you in a second. But this time, countries are going through financial crisis. That countries are not having enough money to support their people. Many of the biggest countries in the world are in in a challenge where they don't know how to manage the situation anymore. But once this temporary challenge goes away, we are stepping into a new and fresh world order where there will be opportunities for the little people as well as the rich people. So what kind of opportunities are you talking about? So what is going to happen is we are we are going to step out of this service economy. So if you look at, Debbie, about business, a long time ago, like 100 years ago, we were basically almost farmers, like 50% of the U.S. were farmers uh, long t- some time ago. And then even India right now, and more than 50% of the people are farmers. Today in the U.S., around 5 to 4 to 5% of the people are farmers. So what happened to the United States? It became richer and better. Now, Today, around 45%, 40 plus percent of Americans work in service industries. They are like in some sort of customer care and things like that. When that is going to be automated, what is going to happen is there is going to be an emergent, uh, newly emerging interest into science uh, and uh, science uh, and uh, learning science and uh, biology and gene editing and healthcare. Because of the pandemic, the need for healthcare and the importance of healthcare has gone up significantly. A lot of jobs will be generated in healthcare because of the pandemic and and gene editing and new finance. For example, the banks are gonna turn into, there's something happening right now called um, 
uh, DeFi, which is decentralization of finance, which means smaller companies are going to take over the online banking industry. And that's going to provide a lot of opportunities for people as well. Debbie. Well, that's all very exciting. But the truth is that it's not just your resume that counts when it comes to getting a job. What's important, maybe equally as important, is your own physical or or spiritual well-being, your connection to your self-acceptance and actualization. Could you speak to that? Sure. So if you look at it, people who succeed in big time in business or philosophy, I mean, business or sociological world or nonprofit are the people who are aligned with themselves. What does that mean? What it means is we, as a collective, we have a collective conditioning of our mind. So which means that all of us subscribe to some sort of limiting stories about ourselves, about the society, about the world. And we also are limited physically, in a sense. We are in somehow this little tiny soul that got trapped into a body and into a mind. So the mind and the body are conditioning us to be limited. So what happens is, at some point, the soul is losing direction. When we come to this world as a kid, we are like, you know, enjoying having happy, beautiful smile and everything. And at some point, we are like, oh my gosh, what do we do now? Right? I mean, we lost, right? We, we are lost because we are conditioned by this, this mind and the body to be not good enough, right? We are like, oh, I'm not good enough. And we are fearful about what is going on. So when we are, Debbie, in alignment with who we are, when we are in alignment with uh, what we stand for, our mind and our body and soul has a direction. We have a direction for our soul. When we are in that direction, no matter what happens to the world, you will have job, you will have business, you will have your practice growing because you will find opportunities because you are in alignment with yourself. You are in alignment with the universe. Well, if you if you were one of these 11 million people who lost their job or you're just feeling so overwhelmed by everything that's happened in the past year, how do you redevelop your sense of self? Okay. To understand that you haven't lost it is the most important step. Because there is a constant part of us we associate with our job. We think that because we have our job, we feel secure. Because of our husband, we feel secure. Because of our children, we feel secure. Because of the money, the retirement, we feel secure. That is just a belief that humans have, right? I I know it sounds like so philosophical. I'll get into the tangible space in a second. But just understand this, that the job doesn't define you. You're defined, you're defined beyond a job, right? So when you are able to, like, the things go up and down, but you remain the same because your soul has a purpose. You came here for a purpose. Now, people are like, oh my gosh, Rubel, that sounds really nice, but how do I get a job? In order for you to get a job, you need to be in this state of mind because when you are in that state of mind, you're like, oh my gosh, I lost everything. What do I do? You know, uh, I lost myself. When you say you lost myself, Would you want to hire somebody who's lost themselves? No, you wouldn't hire somebody who's lost themselves. That's why you need to find yourself within you so that you have the inner certainty, inner confidence, inner clarity. And once you have that inner clarity, you're going to project that in all of your communication. So when you are trying to look for a new opportunity, I recommend that everyone in the U.S., everyone listening to this should start a small business, a small opportunity, a small consulting or a gig type uh, business. And I will talk about that in a second, but everyone should start something that could bring them an additional income. So you have a frame of reference as an entrepreneur and somebody who's valuable. And when you go from that place, you will find opportunities, Debbie. Mm. Well, I, let's talk a bit about, you know, working in the gig economy and starting a business. Do you really think that everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur? Everybody is cut out to be an entrepreneur as long as they could learn one small thing. Business, in my philosophy, of course, I teach businesses in 14 different countries, thousands of businesses in 14 different countries. Some of them starting, just they just started and they do 
less than hundred thousand dollars. Some of them doing hundred eighty to hundred million dollars in different countries. So I'm seeing it in in a different spectrum all over the world in different cultures. I have seen almost all kind of all type of people doing business, but the successful people, Debbie, who who are making big in the industry, big in any field, are the people who add more value than they receive. What does that mean? In the job world, when you are uh, when you are employed, you get a paycheck. You just need to perform enough to maintain a job, like. You're getting fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred a month, uh, fifteen hundred a week, and six thousand a month. You do enough to 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 not fire them. You'll be fine, right? So many people start thinking at some point in their life. Okay, I'm working for somebody. Somebody else is making money, and if they are making money, and I'm making only six thousand, three thousand, ten thousand dollars, why would I work hard? I just do the minimum and go home. After all. Debbie, after all, Debbie, the the Joe and the Mary and the Joseph there, they don't do it anything anyway. I might as well slack. That's the mentality a lot of people. I'm not saying if you're listening to this, you are like this, but that's a mentality. With that mentality, no, you shouldn't start a business. But if you could change that mindset today. You shouldn't do a job either if you, if that's a mentality, right? So, so what we need to have is a new mentality. New mentality is the new mindset, Devi, is you consider your job as an organization. Think that your job is a business. And people who are really successful, and I gave this advice to so many people, and dozens and dozens of people succeeded big time in their career and their business because of this. So what do you do? What you do, Debbie, is consider your job as a business. You are the CEO of this job. And then imagine your employer is your customer. And your employer is your customer. This is your early practice of doing a business with no risk. You don't have any risk. You're doing a business. And your boss, the CEO of the company, your colleagues, they are your vendors, your customers, everything. And imagine that you're running this business effectively and then give so much value than you're receiving. If you are getting $6,000 value today, give $10,000 value. I'm not asking you to work 80 hours a week. When you're spending your 40, 45 hours a week, whatever time you're spending, in that time, be as effective as you can. Be as creative as you can, as if this is you're running Amazon. And when you do that for one year, two year, two years, three years, at that point, you're like, oh my gosh, I could run a business. Now you're ready for a business. It's very interesting because I think the the offshoot of that is that if you do have that mindset, the result is you're also gaining a lot of self-confidence. Absolutely. Yes. So that makes a lot of sense. But going back to your own story, when you started, you're actually your first business was a failure. And then you went on to create these incredibly successful businesses, that enabled you to retire at a relatively young age in life. So how did you come to this understanding of uh, sure. the success? So first of all, it's not just one business. The first business that I started at 19, I started my business out of necessity because we were going through a major financial challenge at the time. I was young and I didn't know what to do. If I was in India and if I were to go for a job, I would get 80 or $90 a month at the time. This was 1999 probably, 1999. And I thought if I start a business, people are making a lot of money. A lot of rich people are there, right? So I thought, you know what? If I start a business, then I could succeed. So I started my first business. Fast forward, at age of 24, I failed in two businesses, had collectively $60,000 debt. Now, <clears throat> now I'm young and bankrupt. I don't know what to do. I'm like, <laughs> what do I do now? So that's like 20, 20, 24. And then I thought, you know what? I struggled a lot, you know what, I learned a lot too. So you know what, let's, let's find out what I could learn from these mistakes, and then I could learn ahead of mistakes, what are the mistakes I could avoid, and then if I could learn ahead of mistakes and avoid mistakes, a lot of mistakes, if I could possibly do that, then I could succeed in a business. Fast forward at the age of 37, 
I exited three three seven figure businesses in two different countries, and yeah, so that's that's my story. Which is a wonderful story and a great way to end this segment. We're going to have to take a short break now. We are speaking about the post-pandemic possibilities in the economic world with Rubel Chandy. And we'll be right back. When is a car not a car? When it shows up in your dreams. Cars are one of the most common dream symbols. If you don't know why you're dreaming about cars or any image, it can leave you confused or scared. But that dream could be a solution to a pressing problem or an insight into a solution that's been bugging you for years. Go to my website and sign up for a complimentary discovery session, and I'll help you understand why a dream is a terrible thing to waste. Go to thedreamcoach.net for more information. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter weissman Yes, welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, Debbie Specter weissman and we're speaking with Rubel Chandy about business and the opportunities that are out there for women. So I do want to get back to speaking about women specifically. Do you think that there's something inherent about being a woman that makes her, gives maybe will give her an advantage in this new economy? Absolutely. So the new economy and the coming decades are for women. I'll explain why. What happened over the last four million years to last 10,000 years, depending upon what you believe, is that this is a hunting men basically creating the workplace for men and structured the workplace and the organizations, the management, everything is designed by men for men. This is kind of a men for men's warehouse business all over the world. That's changing now. Women entered the workforce around 70 years ago for the most part. And now the way we work is changing because we, obviously the men screwed up a lot that we need women's help to restore the next level of sanity in the world, right? So that is the the behind the scene philosophy of it. But specifically, neurologically speaking, men are good at like taking single dimensional task based actions. Women are more process oriented because women women can use ten times white matter than men in in a particular context, and men can use six times gray matter than women. And some people interpret that as women having ten times white matter, which is which is not true because then our brain would be like bigger than our head will be bigger than a dinosaur because you cannot have that much difference. But women know how to use white matter more than uh, men. What does that mean? It means that from an executive decision standpoint, from a multitasking standpoint, thinking about many things and creating a perspective that is unique, women are much better. So women are literally more suited to be a CEO. Men could be a really good CEOs, operating operating person, but as a CEO or a president of a company, women will shine more. So that sh- that is going to shift majorly in the Fortune 500 companies in the next two decades. Number of women being CEOs are going to increase. Same with small businesses, entrepreneurship. The reason is, in a confused, uncertain world, we need multiple perspectives, and men can go from one perspective, get one thing done and come back. It's as if I go to kitchen, I know how to boil egg. That's the only thing that I know. So I need to boil my egg. And if anybody talk to me, I need to concentrate on boiling my egg. But my wife's name is Nisha. Nisha comes to kitchen. She, this is like a show. She can do like seven things at the same time. But that's the real metaphor of the what is happening in the world. Because generally speaking, men can can only single focus into one thing and then forget about everything else. But women can single focus, but still think about so many things at the same time. That's what we need in this new world order. And also uh, women take the qualities that we consider feminine quality, like caring, concern, and the emotional ideas. And putting that in a business sense makes the business more holistic and maybe more Uh, appealing or successful to the people who are out there today. That's definitely true, Debbie. And the the reality is 
another mindset of the masculine energy was let's get things done let's get things done uh, as fast as we can whether it is right or wrong that was a mindset versus now every every customer if you if you mess up one customer's life if you mess up one product one service then the entire company could have a major major challenge so giving that caring and concern and empathy for for the customer the the mama the mom's energy the mother the mother's energy that is the energy that needs to lead businesses not the masculine energy i'm not saying we shouldn't have masculine energy we we must have masculine energy at the same time it needs to be complemented with the feminine Mm, absolutely. You're talking about the jobs that are out there for women and starting their own businesses. Do you see the need for women to receive new training or do, can they use the skills they already have? I would start with the skills that they already have, Debbie, depending upon what they want to do. So think about it. Most of people who are listening to this, they, they already know English. We'll start there, right? So if you if you are making significantly less income right now, you could basically make eighteen to twenty two dollars just teaching English to kids in other countries. Some other countries that we serve, there are different websites like VIPKid dot com, QKids dot com. There are many companies but you could search uh, as long as you understand that you know you could actually teach english and you're like oh my gosh i don't know how to teach english you don't need to lo- know a lot about teaching english you already know how to speak english you already can listen to english obviously because you're listening to me and and then some of these companies will train you how to teach effectively and this is going to be an emerging trend uh, in many countries so that that is something that could potentially get you between um, 35 to uh, 35 to 45k uh, depending upon who you work with if you're working full time for organization and if you don't want to do full time just do it as a gig for 2 hours a day or 1 hour 1 hour a day or something like that so that you could start there so that is something that almost everybody can do i think yeah mm-hmm. and you're talking about jobs that can actually be done from the home where they don't have to invest in paying for office space or equipment and all of that stuff right absolutely yeah in us if you're listening to this from the us you could do it as a 1099 contractor um a contractor for for one of these organizations and then start doing that and here this that's the that's the that's the lowest level that you could grow but that there's nothing wrong with that you could start there and start making income and learn how to do this this whole uh, um you know how to play in this whole gig economy and once you have that nailed or if you're like you know what i need to have more money i want to i want to spend i mean i have like special skills i have i know how to do graphic designs or i know i have fabulous voice that i wanted to be a voice recording artist for somebody somewhere in the world then you go to the next level you you start building street credibility online through some of these websites so it could be some of the websites that you might be familiar with like upwork uh, or fiverr f i v e r r dot com so there you will be like okay you will be like you start your work and initially you are not making a lot of money because nobody knows you you don't have reviews and you are investing into a business you need to have a job while you do that and then you build street credibility build a lot of reviews and then you you bring in your signature into this keep in mind i i said this before i'm telling you this again don't go from from an employee's mindset go from from an entrepreneur's mindset what is the entrepreneur mindset everything that you do you do like picasso or michelangelo imagine that you're doing a painting that's going to be remembered for the next 500 years okay and if you already are a perfectionist cut down on your perfectionism do the opposite direction go in the opposite direction but the bottom line is make sure that what you do is remarkable and even if you make a little bit of money it will stack on the top of each other and then once you reach a point you're like oh my gosh so many people love you you will be able to increase rate and you could start looking for new and bigger opportunities 
Mm-hmm. And again, having your own business and having that little success, you can build on it and build on it and build on it to you build that muscle of confidence within you and which then makes you believe in, in yourself and then you can do whatever you want to do at that point. Absolutely. Yes. So in your book, 90 Days to Life, you tell a story of a woman's road to personal and financial mastery. But it also has uh, some practical tips in it as well. What I was really interested in was uh, you have methods to make productivity and even email more efficient. Have you talked to me about that? Sure. Let's think about the things that we need to do. The, The biggest thing that people have today, I remember I was working for an organization more than almost close to a decade ago. And what happened was, Everybody, I mean, one of the vice presidents of the company called me and said, Rubel, like, what do you do? Like, how could you accomplish this many things at this much time? And I was thinking about it, like, why am I able to do that? Like, many people are not able to catch up with me. I pretty much, for the 40-hour work week, I used to finish in 15 hours, uh, 50, literally 15 hours, and I would go home. And the company was okay with that at the time. And then I quit the company because I was too bored. But one thing that I did at the time, and one thing that I do right now, is I don't build imaginary mountains in front of me. What does that mean? What it means is we all have imaginary to-do list in our mind. Like we have, oh my gosh, I need to do that. Oh, do that, that, this, oh my gosh, oh, that, that, and that. And, And we do nothing. Right. So we are overwhelmed by the list of things that you need to do. And we do nothing. So essentially, we essentially it's good as no good as having one thing. Right. So that's something that I learned early in my career that, you know what, get everything out of your head. Get everything out of your head. So if you feel like you are not able to produce any time. Your, your default action is go back, like decide to spend two hours and take a piece of paper, write down or use a software, Microsoft Word or some document or, or any softwares like sana, A-S-A-N-A.com or Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O.com and then write down everything in your head, every action that you want to take, everything that you promised your mother-in-law, everything that you told some person, oh, I said, oh, next Saturday I'll meet you. I forgot everything into a list. And once you write down, once you write down that, like scratch off 80% of it. So you would have probably 100 things, I don't know, 50 things. So you just say, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And so 80% of it, if you have 100 things, scratch off 80 of them. Then you have 20 things from that thing, Right. If you have 50, just take 10 from it. And from that 10, Debbie, what you would do is you find out what are the two things that would get you the best results. And then get those things and forget about those eight for now and work only on those two things. So you don't have a mountain in front of you, but you know from the mountain, these are the the gold and the haystack. Right. So you find that gold in the haystack, work only on that, get that done until it's done. And that's how you get things done. What a wonderful way to end this segment. But I do have time for one final question for you, Rubel, which is how can people find out more about you and your services? Sure. Um, you can um, you can visit my website, rubelchandy.com, R-U-B-L-E-C-H-A-N-D-Y. And I'm actually teaching uh, a free productivity training. If you come to the website, you will learn how to get access to it. And my book is called 90 Days to Life. You could search for 90 Days to Life anywhere, and then you would find many places selling 90 Days to Life, which is a simple, powerful story that could dramatically change the way you look at the entire world of entrepreneurship or your business. Well, Rubel, thank you so much for being on Dream Power Radio today. Absolutely. It was was great. It was great uh, being uh, with you. Oh, thank you. We've been speaking with Rubel Chandy about business and the new economy. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. If you have, please tell all your friends, follow me, and drop a positive review on your podcast site. And if you're on Clubhouse, join me in my club, 
Club Dreams, where I host weekly rooms in all aspects of dream work. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Spector Weissman. For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio on the amazing Women and Men of Power Network, the world's leading positive programming network, powered by Raven International.